humanitarian situation is not acceptable. Humanitarian access through the Lachin Corridor and other routes must be available. Now we will do everything possible to make that happen, and we look forward to continuing to work with you um, and the rest of this committee to make that happen. Well, well thank you. Um, we'll turn to a round of five minutes. Um, 400 tons of essential goods used to go to the Lachin Corridor daily. On August 15th, we saw the first reported death from starvation of a 40-year-old man, and I fear he will not be the last. Do you share uh, my assessment as well as the ICJ's assessment that the blockade may represent a real and imminent risk to the health and life of Karabakh Armenians? Yes, we do, Senator. Uh, we share your sense of ur urgency, and that's why we are working this as hard as we are. Well, can you explain to me then why the United States is not or cannot do more to get humanitarian assistance in as well as what we are doing to support the International uh, Committee on the Red Cross? Um, we've actually undertaken quite a lot of action on that front, Senator. Um, we have been working this nonstop, in person, over the phone with all different actors, uh, Baku, Yerevan, Stepanakert, uh, to try to move this thing. We finally, I believe, were able to um, work with international partners to get a first uh, truck through. Um, that's a Russian truck, I, I, I would uh, uh, point out. Uh, but the point is that that traffic is now flowing. Um, the agreement is that uh, traffic through the Lachin corridor has to be open. So while I think all of us welcome uh, that one truck uh, through Agdam, I think all of us also agree it is not enough. It's not enough. Lachin has to be open. Other routes can be open too, but Lachin must be open. That's a that's one, a one truck is um, non-negotiable. One truck is not mercy. Absolutely, uh, it's not even what's just. Uh, the reality is, is you know, in addition to the blockade of Nagorno-Karabakh, President Aliyev is reportedly building up troop presence both around Nagorno Karabakh and Armenia's border. Surely we can't take anything he says about wanting to find a solution to the crisis seriously when he is withholding food and also threatening violence. To me, that's pretty outrageous. I'm concerned that we are not, I hear your testimony, but I am concerned that we are not bringing urgency to this situation and taking a whole of government approach to pressure Aliyev. How real are the fears of renewed war? And what is the department doing to avert an Azerbaijani attack on the people of Nagorno-Karabakh and Armenia? Has the State Department told him to stand down and threaten sanctions? Has the White House and National Security Council told him to stand down? Has the Pentagon, through contacts in the Azerbaijani military, told him to stand down? These are the problems that I have with the waivers of Section 907. I don't understand. If, if that is about having influence with the Azerbaijanis, they're not working very well. Uh, and if anything, uh, it is uh, giving them a qualitative edge over Armenia's uh, uh, defense. So, so can you answer those questions for me? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Those are uh, important but complicated um, questions, uh, but there's a simple answer to all of those. Um, I've got here a ream of uh, uh, paper um, listing all the various telephone calls, meetings, travel that we've had to uh, send across a very, very clear message. Number one, Lachin Quarter must be open now, now, no more delay. Number two, we will not tolerate any military action. Uh, we will not tolerate any attack on the people of uh, Nagorno-Karabakh. That's very clear. Um, as we do this, uh, we're mindful of, of the fact that, technically speaking, um, the war is uh, not over between Armenia and Azerbaijan, which adds uh, urgency to our commitment 
to try to support a durable and dignified peace agreement between Armenia and Azerbaijan do you that know takes the into account do you know the security of the people the of the National Karabakh. Security Council, if yes, the they Pentagon, have. have they all weighed in? Yes, they, they have. They have all weighed in. Um, they, so uh, Jake Sullivan hosted uh, the foreign ministers of Nagorno-Karabakh, uh, sorry, uh, Armenia and Azerbaijan a few months ago for discussions here in Washington. The Secretary has done several rounds of that. Um, the Secretary has also had um, multiple phone calls with uh, President Aliyev. I have had multiple phone calls with the foreign ministers of both countries over the last couple of weeks alone to drive home those messages. I believe that we are beginning to see a little bit of movement, um, but we're not going to rest, Mr. Chairman, until uh, uh, we actually see real results. All of this is just in, in pursuit of uh, the 2020 agreement, the ceasefire agreement. There, uh, you know, Azerbaijan made agreements. We are just asking uh, even though we think there's much more to ask for, we are just asking for them to live up to their agreements. Now, if the agreements that they made, uh, the commitments that Azerbaijan made in the November 2020 ceasefire, if, if we, it's now three years after nearly, and we are revisiting that which they had agreed to and that have violated. So uh, I, I, I just hope you'll tell the Secretary on my behalf that I would hate to see that this administration stands by and allows ethnic cleansing to take place on their watch and under their eye. We don't have to wait for reports of what happened a decade later. It's happening in real time. I've already raised this question at previous hearings months ago. And I said, people are dying. And I got a response, well, we're not sure about that. People are dying. I don't know how many more have to die. And I certainly expect that if this continues, even if this, if this is abated tomorrow, that we're not going to keep waiving Section 907. We only embolden Aliyev. We give him a message that it's okay. That's the wrong message. Senator Ricketts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Assistant Secretary Kim. Um, since the breakup of the Soviet Union, Armenia has been an important security partner for Russia and houses one of the few military